Welcome to Fry AI, and boy, do we have a lot of spicy news again today. There's been so much huge news over the last couple of days. It's probably the biggest news today that there's been maybe all year in the AI space, and that is OpenAI had their dev day, and they released a ton of new tools. We're going to go over all of it right here tonight. So the first thing that they announced, which is the big, big news, is their chat GPTs. Now, you might ask, what's chat GPTs? Great question. Chat GPTs are a specialized chat GPT tool or chatbot that you can configure any way you want. So if you want to make a chat GPT about healthcare, you can do that. If you want to make a chat GPT about your family, you can do that. If you want to make a chat GPT about the coolest haunted houses in the area, you can do that. You can make anything you want um, with these chat GPTs. And the cool thing about it is that there's actually going to be a store for chat GPTs. Um, so here's their announcement on their website. GPTs are the new way for anyone to create tailored versions of chat GPT to be more helpful in their daily life at specific tasks at work or at home and then share that creation with others so pretty much exactly what i just said um, but you'll be able to share these things so for example you know a sticker whiz i'll help you turn your wireless dreams into die cut stickers and ship it to your door tech advisor from setting up a printer to troubleshooting a device so imagine like my parents call me all the time where they have tech questions because I'm a computer programmer at heart. They constantly call me and ask me for advice. I swear, if you're a computer programmer, just uh, turn off your phone when people ask you for tech advice. I'm not a computer genius. I just know how to code a little bit. But anyways, this would be something perfect you could use for them. You could set up a chat GPT just to troubleshoot what they're doing. You know, Most of the time it's, I lost my password. I don't know where it is. This tech advisor might be able to point them in the right direction. So that's cool. So how do you go about making these chat GPTs? Well, there's a profile builder and at the dev day, actually one of the biggest AI influencers out there, Rowan Chung, went to the dev day and he was able to get some screenshots and do a demo of the actual chat GPTs because they have not been released yet. They're going to be released soon, but we can see what those looked like. So basically this is how it's going to look. You can configure your chat GPT right here. You name it, whatever you want, and then you give it a description. So here it's become a helpful bot that optimizes posts on X to maximize engagement. And then like you would on chat GPT, instead of writing a prompt in chat GPT, you write instructions for what you want your chat bot to do. So in this case, he wants it to analyze his Twitter posts for the most part. So in this case, instead of putting your prompt in here, like you would in regular chat GPT, you put instructions of what you want your chat GPTs to do. So in this case, he wants his chat GPT to optimize his Twitter post, tell him how good it is, rate it on a scale of one to 10, and then also tell him what's the best time for him to post that Twitter post. And then also, which is really awesome for these chat GPTs, is you upload documents. So in this case, he uploaded his Twitter metrics and some some of his tweets, things like that. And that helps the chat GPTs learn more about your specific use case. So the more data you feed it, the better it's gonna be. So imagine if you had a chat GPT on your family, right? You wanted to be able to ask it anything about your family history, your lineage, anything like that. You would upload as much information you can to this chat GPT builder profile, and it would create that customized family chat bot for you. You also have some options to choose if you want web browsing. So if ChatGPT can't look up something because it doesn't have up-to-date data, it can go on the web browser to do that. It can also make and create images for you if you want and a code interpreter so it can output code. All amazing thing. You configure it there and then we'll go on to see what the finished product is over here. So this is the finished product. And as you can see, Rowan gave this example. This is his tweet right here. Here's a sneak peek of OpenAI's new GPT builder. And it's just a tweet about it. He says it's insane. And now his chat GPT, which is called X optimizer GPT, uh, did exactly what he instructed it to do. So he says the optimal time to post your tweet for maximum engagement is uh, 11 PM PST time. And they even rated an eight out of 10 here. And then finally the custom chat GPT outputs a better version of his actual tweet. So it makes it more engaging. So very cool. It's one specific example, whatever you can think of, you can make a chat GPT chat bot about it's incredible. Since you can create your own chat bot, there's going to be a store for your chat bot. Now think the app store for iOS and the iPhone. It sounds like it's going to be similar to that. So you're going to be able to create a chatbot, customize it as much as you want, upload it to their app store, and actually make money off of it if people use it and buy your app, which is insane. So they're going to be rolling this out later this month, and it will allow you to share your chatbot and do other things like that. There'll be a leaderboard to show which chatbots are doing the best, just like you see in the Apple App Store. So it's it's really going to change the game in a lot of aspects. And the news just keeps coming. There's a lot more. We're not even halfway done yet. So stick around. They're going to allow 
developers who tie into real world APIs. So if you want to make a custom website and use the OpenAI API, their API will let you call in, do other things like Google Drive and your emails on Gmail, anything that pretty much has an API. So that's awesome because it opens up the doors for any kind of tool out there that you can talk to with an API like Canva or Zapier, you'll be able to integrate it into your web app with this connect feature. Now for the enterprise version of ChatGPT, that even got a bunch of upgrades. So one of the things they're gonna be doing is they're gonna allow you to upload your own documents in the ChatGPT chatbot for private enterprise users. So if you're a company and you wanna upload a bunch of your internal documents, you'll have a private chatbot that you can do that with. So for example, customers like Amgen, Bain, and Square are already leveraging internal GPTs to do things like crafting marketing materials, embodying their brand, aid support staff with answering customer questions, or help new software engineers with onboarding. So they can create a custom chat GPT for each of those specific things. So imagine you have a company and you've got to train someone for a week when you hire someone new. Well, you can create a chat GPT to do that for you and save you a ton of time and have that internally facing only. And finally, with the main news, chat GPT now includes fresh information and they're information is updated to April 2023. Now it was up until 2021. So now you can pull data all the way up to April of 2023, which is a huge jump. And then if you want data after April 2023, you can just use that uh, website feature in ChatGPT and it will find new data for you. So there's workarounds for that. And on the more techie side of things, ChatGPT has even more news. So right now, ChatGPT4 is their latest LLM, but they're coming out with a new one called GPT4 Turbo and is more capable and has more knowledge of world events up to April 2023, like we just uh, referenced. And it also has a 128,000 context window, so it can fit the equivalent of more than 300 pages of text into a single prompt. Now, this is huge news because right now you can't do that. In ChatGPT, maybe 10 pages you can upload of text. Uh, you'd have to use Claude.ai to use anything more than that. But now you can upload up to 300 pages of text into a single prompt. Now, you got to be careful with that because it's going to cost you more money if you use that, especially for the API. But that's huge news and you can use it right now with the gpt4 1106 preview uh in the api so most of this news on this page is for uh the api end of things and one of the biggest features being released in terms of the api is this assistant api so the assistant api is letting developers build agent-like experiences within their own applications so it's letting you create pretty much agents are the same thing as chat gpts but on the api end of things so you'll be able to create chat gpts in your application have them talk to each other you can talk to them do whatever you want so that's basically what the assistant is Another feature is new modalities in the API. You'll be able to use GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, uh, Dolly 3 for image generation and text to speech. So right now you'll be able to type in anything you want in the API and it will provide speech for you. So right now, Eleven Labs and Koki are the two big players in text-to-speech, but OpenAI is going to be able to do that for you as well in the API. And let me backtrack to the main features we were talking about before. On ChatGPT, instead of picking default browse with Bing, advanced data analysis, plugins, Dolly 3, you won't have to choose one of these before you type in a prompt. It will just do all these for you in one prompt, which is super nice. Because a lot of times now, I'll choose Dolly 3 if I want to create an image, and then I'll have to switch back to default fault, um, things like that. You will not have to do that anymore, which is just super cool. And then you might be asking in terms of pricing, how's the pricing going to work? Well, ChatGPT's API just got twice as cheap. They're making everything, all the calls twice as cheap. So that's great news for developers that want to work with the API. It will cost half the price. And finally, in terms of the API end of things and overall, I guess, is that OpenAI is going to offer a copyright shield. So what that means, whatever you generate on ChatGPT, like if, via be an image, a summary, anything you can think of, no one can sue you. You're going to be protected by OpenAI. You can be sued, but the copyright shield protects you. So if you were sued, OpenAI will come in and fight those uh, litigations for you, which is great peace of mind, especially since all these artists are coming after OpenAI and they're mad about so-called stealing their images and like likeliness. 
goodness. Finally tonight, we're gonna go over my analysis of everything that's going on. This news is gigantic. I can't emphasize that enough. There's so much uh, news that is gonna change the game over the next, you know, one, two, three, four, five years. We might look back at this in the future and be like, that was a pivotal point in AI. You know, just to have a app store out there, I think is really gonna kill a bunch of these AI tools that already exist. So there's so many tools like we've spoken about, tools to upload documents and have your business analyze them or have your own chat bot for your business or just stupid tools like creating rap lyrics, anything you can think of that you see nowadays in terms of AI tools, those could all be gone and by the wayside because what's going to happen is people are going to be creating these chat GPTs and uploading them to the OpenAI store and people are going to be selling their apps that way. Why would you go on to some third party website to create a, you know, if you want to create a love letter for your girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, there's a tool that does that via AI, but there's an app to do it on OpenAI. Why, why would you choose the website? You know, the OpenAI um, app is probably going to be more quality. It's going to be better. You're just going to go on there and pay maybe a couple bucks. Whereas if you go on the website, you'll be charged a subscription or something like that. So I think it's really going to put 99 to 95% of these AI tool companies out of business. Now, the one saving grace is ChatGPT is very censored and they're going to continue to censor things, probably even more so. So if you can create a tool that plays on that, you might win out because people are going to want to use a tool that's not censored versus is censored if they have to choose between an app and a website tool that's not censored. So that's one uh, saving grace out there. I think both can exist, but again, this is going to kill this app store in particular is going to kill a ton of tools out there because there's going to be a lot of competition to make the best app for say, writing a tweet for you or writing an Instagram post for you that they're going to be so good that no one's going to use anything else except for these tools on the app store in OpenAI. So very intriguing. It's something to keep an eye out. And finally, these apps are going to evolve into something else. So even OpenAI and their blog and, and press release today said that the, the chat GPTs are going to turn into agents, but they want to do this slowly. So the agents are going to turn into some things that can talk to each other. So imagine if you made an agent for assisting you, it's your assistant secretary agent, but then you have an agent that orders pizza for you. Well, you could tell the assistant agent to order a pizza for you. And then that assistant's going to go talk to the pizza ordering agent and so on and so forth, which is crazy because you could have a hundred agents talk to each other and do one specific task. So you're gonna have the world at your fingertips with these agents. It's just a matter of time. OpenAI wants to roll this feature out slowly. So that's what these chat GPTs are. They won't be able to sort of uh, talk to each other yet, but that's their goal. They even said that in their press release today for agents to be able to talk to each other and interact with the real world is, is what they said. So that's it, groundbreaking news tonight. Thanks for tuning in. As always, please subscribe. It means a lot to us. And also subscribe to our email newsletter, fry-ai.com forward slash subscribe. We will see you tomorrow night with more breaking news. Hopefully have a great night. This is Ryan signing out. Take care.